Welcome to our podcast, The Family Business, Supernatural Unveiled. My name is Namrata. And I'm Nikita. And we're just two sisters on a hunting trip. We'll see you every Monday. Welcome back to our podcast. Today we look at episode 20, Dead Man's Blood. It was aired on the 20th of April, 2006. It was written by Catherine. 20th, 20th, 28th or 20th? Excuse you. Oh, and we're 21, 22nd. <gasps> <laughs> so fake. <laughs> but yeah, that's like 18 years before. Yeah, you did the math all by yourself. <sighs> Go ahead. Okay. Anyways, it was written by Catherine Humphreys mm-hmm. and John Shaban. Mm-hmm. He's come back. Yeah? Yeah, John Shaban. I know that name because I struggled with it. <laughs> Don't you always? Yep. Uh, it was directed by Tony Warmby. <laughs> look, look, look. Warm by. Where are you getting warm by from? But there's a hitch. You know. Warm. Warm by. Okay, sorry. Seriously. Okay, anyway. Okay, get and name. overall, it's the 20th episode of Supernatural. Very soon. Absolutely. Okay. So, the episode starts with, basically, you see an old man, <laughs> who we get to know as Daniel Elkins later on. He's That's scribbling something. <laughs> he's sitting and scribbling Elkins. something in his journal. Yeah. And he's basically drinking in a bar. Yeah. And that's when you see a group of people enter. Yeah. And they, you can see that they kind of catch his attention. Yeah. And <clears throat> they come and sit down and, you know, basically ask for drinks. And he, by this, then literally starts running away from the bar. Yep. And we see that he goes to his house. He goes to his house where you see that this lady that we saw who came into the bar later with the group is suddenly in his house. And Was it just me or did she look different in the bar and the house? No, she looked exactly the same. Really? It is just you. Okay, because she seemed a little um, distorted in his house. But like, you know, in the bar she seemed like Oh, I'm cool. And the house is like, bro, I'm going to punch you. Moving on. Okay. <laughs> Basically, you then see to kind of um, defend himself, he loads a gun. Yeah. A five-shot coat. Anyway. <laughs> how, how, even after everything. Death silence. <laughs> after everything, he... Still dies. Yeah, bye bye. Yeah. That's what you get for having a boring name. My God, stop it. Okay, anyway, in a diner on the other side, we see that basically there's somewhere in Nebraska. Sam and Dean are looking over news stories. Basically, they're trying to find a job. Yeah. Can you imagine they sit and find a job every other day? Yeah, yeah. I just give up, bro. I don't even like doing what I'm doing. I don't like going to school. I'm like, get me out of here. And they're like, oh, let's go to this place. Let's go to this place. I'm like, "Mm, stay at home. (laughs) And that's when Sam reads about Elkins. Yeah. Death and obviously Dean recognizes that name. He sees that he knows that name from somewhere, yes. and he recognizes it from the Dad's journal. journal, and that's obviously why they head west. So when they come to Elkin's cabin, they see that it's kind of in a chaos. In a chaos. It's in chaos. It's kind. Of, it's in chaos. And anyway, you got the point. <laughs> it's in chaos, and you see that it's obviously the night, and you see that there's someone who's watching them from outside. A fart. We kind of know who it is. But anyway, amongst all of the this wreckage, you see that actually Dean finds a journal, which is very much like their father's. Yeah. But there's a message. Yeah. And that message all ends up being a combination. 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 Like the pulpa. <laughs> combination to a post office box. Yeah. And that's when... Sorry, that's when they open that, they see that there's mail. For JW. Yeah. Who's JW? <clears throat> the person, the most hated person on this planet. And that's when they realize it's exactly like what their father does. Yeah. So when so they're trying, when they're trying to, when basically they get the letter and they're trying to open it when yeah. suddenly John Winchester bangs on the 
with Govindo. Yeah. And he comes back. Hate him so much. He should just <laughs> collapse and die. Now the actor. The character. Yeah. Which he kind of does. Then Yay! Yeah. Yeah. In a few episodes, in two more episodes. I can't wait. Spoiler alert! But anyway, I so, think they probably watch season one at least. Yeah. So they hear when he reads the letter, he realizes that Elkins are actually been, you know, keeping the uh, Colt from him. Yeah. A gun that was made by Samuel Colt in eighteen thirty-five. Was it thirty-five or thirty-two? Thirty-five. Oh. And the boys realize that whatever attacked Elkins has taken the gun, obviously. So John tells him that it's vampires and they vampires vampires and they hunt them together. So then the next scene which I find so funny that Sam and Dean are just sleeping over there yeah, nicely yeah. <laughs> while you see um Uncle G what? <laughs> Why you John. see that John is sitting over there? <laughs> I forgot to say. Obviously, on the other side, you see that actually, um, there's a couple who was driving. Yeah. Oh, on the yeah. road. Oh, what else would they do on the road? Yeah, they were driving on unlike unlike that guy in the monster truck running. Oh. No. <laughs> but yeah, they were driving on the road, and one of the vampires acts dead. To kind of capture them. Yeah, see, in, in Sarah Monster, I thought you had mentioned the Hookman thing. What were the Hookman doing? Not the Hookman. The couple in the car. Oh. That's what I thought you were going to say. Okay, anyway. <laughs> and then you were like, oh, the monster truck. Yeah. So John, uh, John is... Yeah, I was. The jo- Hookman was this season. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. John uh, is obviously listening to the 911 call. That was made when this whole everything happened. So he obviously wakes up the boy, boys, mm-hmm. and they go to investigate. And basically, Sam, being Sam, is questioning. Excuse everything. me. No, I mean, Sam, you yeah, know, from the beginning, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sam is someone who's very curious about things. Yeah. So Sam is very curious at why they're suddenly going, what's happening. Yeah. And John is just saying, keep quiet and follow me. Shut sure. up. Yeah. So they come to the, uh, they reach the location of the abandoned car, and that you see that. You know, Sam is not very happy with the way John is kind of dominating. He feels like John is treating them like kids. Yeah. Um, and he's basically constantly questioning everything that John is saying. And Dean is kind of done with this whole argument and everything that's going to happen. And yeah. I, I guess he kind of knows it's going to happen because he's obviously seen it happen back yeah. to back. So he's kind of, you know, he knows what's going to come and he's like, Oh, what do I sit and do this? Do I sit and handle the two? Yeah, he just like both of you pipe down and yeah. he just walks back into the car. Yeah. So, meanwhile, you see in the vampire nest or the barn or whatever you want to call it, it's called a vampire nest. Yeah. You see that Kate is showing Kate is the vampire, the female vampire who we saw this. Yeah, beginning. the distorted but weirdly <laughs> okay one. She shows the gifts that she got to her mate, Luther. Myth? Myth. Luther. His myth, guys. <laughs> myth. His myth. <laughs> so he's kind of hor- uh, horrified that she killed the old man, even though it was to kind of avenge his family. Mm. But he says that revenge isn't worth much if you end up dead. I mean, you both end up dead, so like. And that's when he recognizes the gun. Yeah. Sorry, you were saying something. No, it's fine. No worries. Thanks, it. I was like, I was just saying, if you both end up dead, that's perfectly fine as long as you kill the person you wanted to get revenge on first. Like, for uh, even if like, they kill you, like, after a second, you're like, haha, I kill you first. Wait, how would they kill you if they're already dead? I have no idea where your brain is going, so I'm just gonna let you blabber. Okay. But on the other side, you see that Sam and John are obviously having another that's so weird argument. That's Sam, and, Sam John. and John. Yeah. I was like expecting you to say D, and I'm like, yeah. Well, that is John. Uh, yeah. So they're obviously having their own argument on the side. Um, and then John obviously tells them about uh, the savings, account. the vampires. Oh, yeah, that's that's obviously part of yeah. John, John and something <laughs> later. Uh, yeah. So he tells them that the only way you can kill a vampire is by beheading it. <laughs> Right, and that's when he tells them what makes coal, the cold very special and why he actually needs it. So and it kill can, them yeah, it can basically kill anything. Um, like Dean says, anything supernatural also, and basically he wants to use that to kill the demon and yeah. avenge his wife Mary Winchester's. Winchester's. Winchester's death. Uh. <laughs> 
<laughs> but way later, we find out that it can't kill Lucifer or God or any of the people you actually want to kill. <laughs> so while working uh, together to attack the nest and to look basically for the curl, they're discovered by... Sorry, they're discovered before John can grab the gun. <laughs> and they end up running for their lives. Bye-bye. John has an alternative plan. Of course, obviously, a lot of things happens at the nest. But yeah. basically, the point is that they don't get what they wanted. Yeah. John has an alternate plan and kind of orders Dean to go to the funeral home to obtain the dead man's blood. Which obtain. is a poison to vampires. I like that word. Right? So, while he's gone, Sam and John talk. And they're kind of mending their fences. That's why they talk about the college yeah. fund and all of that. And obviously, we see that um, this one comes back. Dean comes back. <laughs> this one. Dean comes back with the blood. And that so they use the dead man blood to basically catch Kate and yeah. kind of draw out Luther through yeah. her. Right? So jo- that's so basically John wants to trade Kate for the cult. Yeah. Because he says that, you know, they mate for life and there's blah, no blah, way he blah. would yeah, that you Luther wouldn't go. Lose her stuff. Yeah. But obviously here you see yeah, that's when again that. the Winchesters are clashing against John. But what I see, what is different now is that Dean, Dean and Sam are in the same team. Yeah. Unlike the previous times where Dean was with I the dad. I think you could see the surprise on Sam's, Sam's face. face. Like, yeah. Huh? Yeah. Huh? You don't get it. Because that's like the best part. When like, you and our parents are teaming up and then suddenly you're just like, hmm, she feels a little weak over there that we jump over here. I'm like, I feel a little betrayed that you were on their side first. Excuse me? You just made me sound like someone who jumps from here to there. <laughs> no, no, no. Like, what the hell? No, no, no. Like, you realize like I'm right or something. Yeah, like, I agree with the point of yours. I'll come to you. You're yeah. like, oh, she looks weak. Let me jump here. Yeah. Oh, they look weak. Let me jump there. <laughs> no, 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 yeah, I'm not jumping. No, I don't mean that. Like, you just, like, realize that, like, I was right or something. Which, like... Okay. <laughs> Anyways, uh, uh, yeah. Okay. Anyway, uh, so basically, I, the clash is I'm wrong. You come on to my side. Like the <laughs> the clash is basically the fact that John wants to do this alone. Yeah. While the boys don't think that they should be doing this alone, and they're all fam- family, so they're stronger together. Yeah. We will ignore that and move on. Family. <laughs> 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 the way you brought it up, I wasn't gonna say because anything. you were literally black. You didn't even know what I was saying. <laughs> I'm like, we'll ignore this, and you're like, oh. and I was like, okay. I kind of disassociated. <laughs> I'm like, what? And you're like, we're not gonna talk about this, and I'm like, huh? John is a weak old man. Like, yeah. what can he do for himself? Can't even cook. Anyway, Boy. so while um yeah, while basically. Uh, John is going in and doing his side of the plan. Yeah. The boys invade the nest and they kill the vampires that were left on watch. Yeah, only one of them. No? Yeah, and free the captives. Here you see that John's plan is basically failed. Like he is at life. And he's knocked out by Luther. However, before Luther can kill him, Sam and Dean attack. With the and dead man's blood. Yeah. And because they ignored their father's orders to stay away, he's, that's the reason he's kind of alive right now. Yeah. But anyway, they take down the vampires and they distract Luther so that John can grab the colt and actually kill Luther yeah, by I shooting wish, him in the head. I wish that they didn't listen to John. They didn't listen to John. I mean, they did listen to John. <laughs> so you see that the gun works and it, can, it kills the vampire. Luther. Luther. Right? So, basically, the episode ends with the fact that John can see sense in what the boys were arguing. Yeah. And he's like, you know what? Now that they have the cult, they will all hunt for the demon together. (laughs) That's kind of where our episode ends. Yeah. Right? Yeah. A little bit of a action-packed episode. Yeah. 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 There is, right? Yeah. I just hope, like, John and Jester, we could see a... Clip of okay. him being going now. ahead. Okay, so the body count for this episode, yeah, is two humans, okay, and three vampires. Which two humans? Oh, Daniel, the Elkin guy, and that other guy. The husband. Yeah, her boyfriend. Husband, whatever. Whatever. husband boyfriend. Yeah. Whatever. Two husbands brother. and three vampires. Sorry, brother. <laughs> we have the first death of a hunter. 
Daniel Elkins, which happens a lot later on. Yeah, the whole hunter just die and die and die. And die. Yeah, wow. but there's the first hunter that is killed. Yeah, Daniel Elkins. And for the series so far, <gasps> we have 138 humans. Oh no! Eleven ghosts, three vampires, one god, one rawhead, one shapeshifter, one um, shtiga, and one wendigo. Correct. But I wish they killed off more humans. Why? Because human populations are decreed. Oh my god! A bit too much. Shush. Okay. Um. What did the trivia people say? What did trivia, trivia people? people say? What is the trivia? Give me goofy goofs. Do you have goofy goofs? I do have goofy goofs. <gasps> Just two of them, but I have them. I have a lot of trivia for you, though. Yeah. It's trivia time. We should have like a song. Okay. Okay. I I I made my mythology song. Okay. Yeah. To create your own. Yeah. Okay. Song. I'm okay. No, I'll create. Okay. <laughs> it's trivia, trivia, trivia. It's timey, timey, time. You then you have. Oh goofy. my God! Stop. Then you have goofy, goofy. No, you just ruined it. Okay. Okay. I'll give it to you. Okay. No, 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 no. It's trivia time. Thanks. Seven. Um, I guess. Okay. So. <laughs> Okay, so Eric Kripke never actually wanted to do vampires mm. because he felt Buffy the Vampire Slayer had yeah. done it enough. Yeah. But then, as you see later on, yeah, as the show goes <laughs> yeah. ahead, he kind of gets over himself. Um, and they do vampires. Yeah, a lot. Yeah, a they lot. Didn't be friends. With okay, fine, enough. <laughs> I have spoiled a lot this episode. Yeah, I know. <laughs> okay, so this is the first time Sam, Dean, and John. Have hunted together since Sam went to college. Well, I'm happy about that. Could they stop hunting with John? <laughs> I'm so serious. I hate him so much. This is the first time the cult is introduced into the storyline. Yeah, I I thought it was introduced way later. I completely forgot it was. It happens right now. Season. Yeah. Because I'm like the hell they use it so much later yeah. on. Yeah, and it's it's literally there all the way till. Ep- Season fifteen. Yeah, it's actually that throughout. Yeah. Thanks to Ruby. Yeah. And Joe, sister Joe. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> so the scene where you see that Sam is trying to save the girl. Oh, and Bobby as well. Yeah. You see where the scene where Charles, Sam is trying to save the girl. Yeah. And she screams. Yeah. I have something. I have a point to make. Yeah, yeah. I'm a little confused. Yeah. Why they don't show her face? You don't see her face when she's screaming, which is very weird yeah, for supernatural, because yeah. you always see screams the purple per- and person's yeah, face. Yeah. This one was just some random head on noise and just screaming. Yeah. And then you just you see it from the back. You see her like you don't see. Yeah, her you see face. Sam's face. You yeah. see Sam's face like, huh? Yeah, you don't I'm see her face. I'm saving you. Very weird. I don't know why. <laughs> I'm sorry, my nose is blocked. <laughs> okay, so I have this great. Snippet of information for you. Yeah. So while they were shooting this episode, yeah, there was a sniper attack. Oh, suspicion. Okay, because of which they had to stop shooting. Oh. Okay. Now let me give you a little backstory to this sniper attack. Uh huh. So basically, a crew member was walking. They this was shot. This scene was in their shooting in Stanley Park. Okay. Okay. So <laughs> a crew member was walking in the park. With the cylindrical equipment, yeah, and that's part of their yeah. shooting and all of that, right? Now a random civilian has seen that, yeah, and called the police and saying that there looks like there's a sniper oh. in Stanley Park. Okay, so the emergency tactical team comes to Stanley Park. Oh my god! <laughs> and then they're like, they they tell me you have to stop shooting. You can't shoot anymore. Take all your crew to safety. There's a sniper attack happening. Looks like a sniper is going to attack from somewhere. We have to fully investigate and all of that shit. And basically, they stop the shooting. Okay. And the uh, the assistant director, he obviously he kind of understood what is happening because when they were explaining that someone saw this cylindrical equipment thing and all. He had a doubt that what they think, so they called up the the crew member who he thought must have held that. Yeah. And then, um, so he called them up and tried to bring in with the police, and listen, it was not that. And the police are very worried that maybe he is part of some other team, and they just don't know yeah. it. And that's when they see some uh, weird, like suspicious van on a side. So 
Um, <laughs> so they actually go and they go and investigate that van and later it doesn't turn out to be anything. Okay. So finally they realize that there was no sniper attack and it was just like, you know, a false alarm. Honestly, it couldn't have been, and maybe it wasn't a cylindrical, it could have literally been like one of like John or like Sam and Dean's guns from that. No, the, Both? the per- civilian said he, she saw that he or she, sorry, saw a, a sniper kind of, a, I don't know, I don't know what it is. Yeah, was. so that's what I'm saying. They have those like long guns, right? Yeah, but sniper guns will not be outside for you to see. They'll obviously be in something. No sniper's going to walk around with that gun. Don't you see in like in movies, they go, they go up to a uh, like the terrace, terrace and that's thing? when they, yeah, that's when they start opening it. Otherwise, they just carry it like that. I'm pretty sure you can't carry it like that. It's very, obviously very suspicious. Hmm. Right? So obviously at the end they realized it was all false alarm. And because of that, for about three hours the shooting had to stop. Only? It seems only, but for a shoot, three hours gone is a little ah, too much. That's true, that's true. You know? Especially because every everything Thursday is a Wednesday. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. Wednesday. But also every Thursday. Tuesday. No, what's Tuesday? Yeah, Thursday. But basically, every and also everything is planned, right? You have this yeah. day to shoot this part. You have like oh, you yeah, know, yeah, things yeah. like that. But anyway, because of all of this, they could not finish all the shooting in time. Yeah. So a lot of the scenes that had to be part of Stanley Park. Yeah. Were done later on set. Oh, so because of this whole it. three hours. Yeah. Oh, is this the kind of thing you're saying? But it's not a cylinder. It's not a cylinder. I don't know what. See, obviously, it wasn't a sniper case. Yeah. But it was some assume. equipment, but they thought it was a sniper case. Oh, that's a dumb civilian. <laughs> so I'm sorry if you're this person's reckless, right? Yeah, I mean, it's everyone's just being safe. It's fine. Okay, so the making of the yeah. Colt gun montage that you see was not actually part of the script. Oh, yeah. That's okay. a guy being like, yeah, the yeah, gun. Yeah. So it's actually not part of the script. It was, um, and it was, so it was actually not shot when they were shooting, yeah. right? But later when they were editing, they yeah. realized that there was a lot of dialogue happening, a lot of conversation happening yeah. with the uh, video not changing at all. Oh. So then they reshot the scene with some random person uh. to act like Samuel Cole. That's why you don't see the face. Yeah, yeah. To act like Samuel Cole just so that they show the whole making. Yeah. Because Samuel Cole does come later on in the season. Yeah, obviously, it's a different person. Yeah. But because they didn't have an actor or yeah. dish like set for it they just show like the from the back of that person uh, I wish Eric Kripke would have been the one doing that <laughs> it'd just be like a cute little small little cameo yeah like um for like the Percy Jackson series mm-hmm. for like um the second book yeah Sea of Monsters there's been like rumors about like Rick Riordan being like a captain oh is it yeah That's nice. a pirate sorry yeah a pirate as a cameo like so like I was just thinking, it came into my head, and I was like, oh, 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 <laughs> oh. Okay. So the inscription on the cold that you see that says non timebo mala. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe uh, is in a Latin or something. Yeah. yeah. It basically means I will fear no evil in Latin. Oh, in Latin. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I no. I will fear no evil in Latin. Yeah. No. That's what it said in Latin. So, this, uh, the Colt that is there in 1835 thing yeah. was actually a cap and ball revolver. That was, a cold. that was in the series has been modified to accept bullets. So, the traditional Colt is yeah. not something that can take bullets. Oh. What is a cap and revolver? Cap and ball revolver. Put the cap on <laughs> and revolve your hand. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's been modified to accept bullets. It was not originally designed that way. Yeah. Okay. So I have this thing. Yeah, okay. you have a lot of things. I do. But I, what I found very interesting is I have broken down briefs of how they shot certain things in the show. Okay. And the episode. Yeah. So one, like I told you, is how the teeth grows yeah, in the vampires. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so it's done in three three sets. Okay. So the first thing is they shoot a close-up shot yeah. of just the teeth and the actor smiling. Okay. Okay, in order to show the teeth, yeah. right? So that's the first shot they do. Then they pause the filming. They put on the fake teeth 
yeah in the on the check. Yeah, yeah on the actor and they shoot the exact same scene again with the clothes yeah. on okay so in post production the effects they go and they make it look like they add effects so for it to grow, grow. from nothing to the next yeah. shot yeah oh that's so cool so that's how you see the teeth growing in the episode you know what would be really cool yeah if like the teeth they made with like ice malt mhm cuz like one of the teeth fell right yeah So like they could just eat the teeth. <laughs> Cuz why would it fall like so easily? <laughs> Are you telling me each time they like take eat blood like suck blood from someone that teeth falls? Yeah, I don't I don't know. Well, like do they eat their teeth as well like? Yeah. No. Okay, all the blood that you see in the episode is all real. And by real I don't oh mean Oh my god. I don't I mean that. actual blood. Oh. I mean that it was not It's visual blood. effects. It is obviously fake blood, oh. but there was no effects used. See, it was you extremely. Go, you got me going. You got me excited. That's why I clarified that it is it's fake blood, but it's not effect blood. It's actual fake blood. And yeah, so they would either See, use a blood. They would either use a blood pump. Yeah. In the actors, yeah. or they would. cut the shot yeah. add blood to the mouths and then resume shot oh shooting. that's cool that's cool yeah <laughs> and then resume shooting and the last little uh point yeah. that i have is oh episode yeah okay. is the beheading scenes ooh okay so how they would do that is that they would first shoot with the person behind the boys right whoever was with yeah, whoever with the boys the are shooting yeah beheading. yeah and the boy would swing till It is swing the machete basically close to when they're going to shoot. Yeah, when they're going to hit the head basically. Yeah, and then they will stop the shooting there. Yeah. Then they will do a reshoot of the exact same thing without the person, without the vampire. Oh, okay. Okay. And in effects, they would just blow off the head. Ah, and we never see the head being yeah, blown off. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what they would do, and that's what they say that the boys were so good. at reshooting exact yeah cuz i didn't know yeah that. you would never see a difference it would be exactly how they did the first time so it made it very easier for them to do these kind yeah, of things yeah cuz i feel like if i was there i'd make like a like a change <laughs> like i can't stand still for that long yeah. like i'm always moving around yeah so they so they do it very well lastly i have two goofs for you goofy go okay so the vampires obviously in the starting when they walk into the um, bar. bar yeah She says, "Jack all around." Yeah, which is basically Jack Daniels that she's asking for the company. Okay. Okay, but when the bartender gives her the bottle, it's yeah. Johnny Walker. It's a totally That's different, a different brand, brand of liquor. Oh, weird. I don't think maybe they didn't have it. Yeah. But shouldn't you be like? Yeah. I'm sorry. Kind of, Or she got like bad like, vibes. It was like just take any bottle <laughs> we have. And the rusty shovel green that is. Basically, joined by one of the vampires. Okay, seems to be the same that Bobby later drives in the series. See, he stole it. He like <laughs> so reduced. No, the vampire left in his like little. Uh huh. The the auto repair shop. Yeah. He was like repair this, and Bobby was like behead. <laughs> Guys, we love Bobby. He was such a better father figure than John. Winchester. No, We John Asterisk Asterisk N. W. Okay. <laughs> okay. A lot of like dead silence. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, that was my trivia and my goofs. Do you have mythology for us? Of course I do. Of Now, do you remember you do. my mythology theme song? No. Good. Neither do I. Good. So we just move ahead. Yeah. Oh, okay. So. <laughs> in traditional folklore mm-hmm. for vampires and stuff like that like supernatural the this is like early early yeah the starting point of vampires yeah. they yeah. believe that the sun actually did harm the vampires okay they just happen to come out at night oh B- because like everyone's sleeping yeah and the occasional stranger yeah and no one's like everyone's in deep sleep right so they can easily get their prey like that right so they just happen yeah. to be out at night uh-huh. but the sun never harmed the oh. vampires in traditional folklore 
Oh. Obviously, that's changed and evolved. Yeah, yeah. But that's what people used to believe all the early. Okay. Um, in, like, some places, mm-hmm. in, like, medieval Europe, mm-hmm. uh, they believe, like, vampires mm-hmm. uh, were, like, they were created by, like, this blood disease. Okay. And garlic, so where the garlic mm-hmm. superstition came, mm-hmm. like, they were like, oh, that's an antibiotic. Oh. That killed the monster. Uh-huh. Because of the blood disease thing. Yeah. N- now, like, I don't know how scientific that is. But, like, carrying a stick of garlic, being like, oh, antibiotic, <laughs> doesn't seem smart. Yeah. Right? Um. So, the very first vampire, mm-hmm. obviously, it's hard to pinpoint yeah, of course. what it is. But one of the earliest, like, recorded people yeah like people who would like thought like a vampire like creature mm-hmm. was in mesopotamia 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 yeah myth mm-hmm. of lily two lily two yeah mm-hmm. uh which was said to be a demon which okay. was associated don't look spell out lily two to for me l i l i t u Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Lily. Oh, okay, fine. I said it right. No, no. I thought it was like the number two or something. No, no, no. I was kind of wondering what that two so, signifies. So, um, this is like a demon which is associated with like night and wind. Mm-hmm. That making them come out at night. Yeah. And like their speed. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And then later, uh, various different cultures, people, they put out their own vampire myths. Mm-hmm. Like the blood sucking revenants of Salvic folklore mm-hmm. or blood um, sucking creatures of Greek mythology. Yeah. Like the Lamia. Yeah. And um, since it's like come, the Lamias also come from um, vampires. It was, mm-hmm. I was gonna like say this, it wasn't part of my mythology. But like the Lamia is also known to like control people. You can, they can control the thoughts of men. Okay. Yeah, control the thoughts of men mm-hmm. that I know of. Mm-hmm. The men that I know of. I got you. Yeah. Um, and they can persuade people really easily. Oh, okay. And, like, again, they, they have, like, fangs. Mm-hmm. And they're more serpent-like. Okay. But they have fangs which can, like, give people a disease, which oh. adds to the blood disease kind of mm-hmm. thing, which mm-hmm. get, kill that person. Yeah. But, yeah. So, like, that's just extra information about the Lamia. Okay, anyways, the modern concept of, like, the vampire itself, mm-hmm. it began in European folklore and literature. Okay. Uh, so, this guy named John Polidoris, mm-hmm. like, released this thing called Vampire, mm-hmm. but instead of I, it's a Y. Oh. Like, yeah, 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 the yeah, state yeah, kind you, of thing. You, and there's another guy called Bram Stoker, mm-hmm. Dracula, mm-hmm. in the 19th century. So that's like the modern, modern ones. Oh. Now, everything supernatural got wrong about vampires. Oh. So the cold of wickedness. Yeah. Right? Uh, so it's like portrayed as the weapon. Women are able to talk. Mm-hmm. The cold can kill anything, right? Yeah. But traditionally, vampires can only be killed by like wooden stakes through their heart or sunlight or decapitation mm-hmm. which was seen mm-hmm. so really with traditional folklore you can't the kill them with exist. the cold yeah. yeah because it was created for supernatural yeah, yeah. that daylight vulnerability mm-hmm. um, in supernatural obviously they're not affected yeah. which is more of traditional folklore yeah but really um, modernized and like middle century those yeah they were affected mm-hmm. by sunlight Okay. And that's why in DVD, they have daylight rings. Mm. So they can go out in the sun without being affected. Yeah. Um, so in Supernatural, the vampires are like immune to all other creatures. Like, they can't be affected by werewolves, none, like none mm-hmm. of them. Mm-hmm. Right? But like traditional vampires, they can be affected by werewolves and any type of supernatural creature. Oh, okay. So like, they're not like immune from everything. Got it. Um... There's, in Supernatural, they're like a hierarchy. Mm-hmm. This Luther guy was at the top. Everyone like reported to him. Yeah. But really, they were like alone. And they were like really into small groups. And people just hunted off on their own. Mm. So there was no this hierarchy. Yeah. No one like controlling each yeah, other. Yeah, they were like in a small group for like yeah. safety in numbers. Yeah. 
but it wasn't like oh this person you have to kill this person yeah. but let's go ask them got it right um they were in human mhm right in supernatural they were put as very human yeah while vampires and folklore they like possess some human characteristics but they were more animal mhm like in folklore they were put, like they were like predators and they were like really lacking empathy mhm yeah Oh, so that's the mythology. That is the mythology on vampires. Yeah. Nice. Okay, what do the IMDb people say? Well, the IMDb people. Okay. Yes, the take it. Oh, you're doing what I used to. Do. Yes. Um for the episode. I am going to say like maybe For me, it was like an eight point seven or an eight point eight. Ah, oh, and that's what you think I'm doing most of the average girls be? Maybe a little lower, <laughs> but like maybe. <laughs> well, you're close. It's an eight point four hmm. on ten, and as yeah. usual, we have the most number, like yeah. significantly most, is ten, <gasps> and half of the tens are eight <gasps> and nine. So kind of ten is like a lot. Yeah. Okay, so. Less to more, always. More to less. More to less. More to less. Okay, I don't like this, but okay. Yeah, that's exactly what you said. Okay, so there is no written review for ten out of ten. Yeah. But the most that is there is for nine out of ten. Yeah. It is well. Both the nine out of tens are by the people we already know. Okay. So first, I'm going to read one. Yeah. Which is very small. So it's kind of obvious who it's it is. It's kind of yeah, it's obvious who it is. It's by Shweta Fab M. Exactly. So Shweta Fab M on twenty fourth May twenty twenty. Yeah. Titles her review as vampires. Mm-hmm. She's given it a nine out of ten, and she says some good law here. It even gives us the side of the monsters. How? The vampire side, the side of theirs, like their story, their stuff. Okay. I didn't see much of that, but kind of. Yeah. Okay. Guess if she saw it, then that's good for her. I guess. <laughs> then the other nine out of ten is by the other people who keep coming. Cubs and culture. Exactly. I was gonna be like commentary. No, cubs and culture. So they say that this show kind of this episode, sorry, yeah, benefits a lot from where the show went. the fact that you know the hunters are kind of like the gunslingers yeah and then you see the western motif here and there that they show in the start of the episode and they said that since it is the first vampire episode it was quite a cool take on the vampires and the um shark like teeth and how they're sad uh, yeah. of the sad slow inevitable decline yeah these two aspects elevate the episode a great deal mm-hmm. Apart from that, there's a touching scene between John and Sam that goes a long way to explain their dynamic, mm-hmm. and some choice fighting among the Winchesters, and the cold is introduced here, and basically it's a, a wonderful element that stays in the show for a long time. Yeah, so that's cups and cultures. Do you have anything to say to that? There's, can I see? There was a spot where I was like, oh, I was gonna say something. Uh. I feel like it, it's true. Like a lot of the show that we see ahead, like yeah. whether it's about how the cold is used, whether it's about you know the whole demon stuff. Yeah. So I think it a lot of it comes from this episode. Yeah. Like a lot of it comes. You know, we do yeah. see a lot of recurring themes from here later on. Mm-hmm. So yeah, yeah. I forgot what I wanted to say. <laughs> okay, the next lower than nine. Is eight out of ten. Yes, and the title is Vampire Nest. Did I say when they wrote that? I did not. Yes. Um, Cubs and Culture wrote the review on sixth September two thousand nineteen, and the title of the review is nice intro for a couple of big elements of the show. They are big elements. Yeah. Sure. yeah. Right. Back to this. So eight out of ten. The title is Vampire's Nest. It's by Claudio Carval Carvalho. 
ఫైట్ Yeah, and these, yeah. <laughs> these unconventional vampires are not afraid of crucifixes, holy water or garlic and only decapitation or dead man's blood are able to kill them. And John kind of seems convinced of the importance to chase the evil fate that killed his wife and the support of Dean and Sam. And I believe they will actuate together in the next episodes. No oh, fancy My language. vote is eight. Oh, okay. Okay. But yeah, okay, which again says the same thing. So yes, that is true. There's a lot of family in the this thing cuz it's kind of where the dad is back now. Yeah. To fight with them. You have anything to add to that? No, I just wish it stops scratching your arm. <laughs> it's itching there. Yeah, don't I'll keep my hand over it. Okay. 6 on 10. It's the <laughs> topic no the the heading no the the title oh my god the title just forgot that word <laughs> the title is called classic winchester obviously posted on 3rd august 2021 mm-hmm. by kphl 84715 mm so this is a perfect example of the boys learning from dad love how they use the stories and make it more realistic instead of the glorified version of vampires <gasps> <laughs> that's a good take i guess it is true it's not like the typical oh my god you come in the sun he's burning yeah i and, killed him yeah <laughs> things like that so yeah it's true i agree so that was the reviews yeah so this episode not too much but what good was that the fact that there was a lot of tens that's true though they didn't write about it but there was a lot of tens yeah you could see that there were a lot of tens yeah okay now this segment is a segment you love yeah It's called in correct quotes. I Take explained it, it last time, so yes, I'm not did. doing it again. You don't need to. So if you don't get it, you don't get it. Oh my god, they would get it. Okay. So, uh so this is the first one is kind of more like a text scene. Okay. It is just in correct quotes. Mhm. It's more of a text scene. Mm-hmm. So Dean messages Sam. Okay, just to recap, you ask me whether this is something that they would be yes, saying, right? If this okay. is something they would say or yes. Do. Yes. 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 So Dean says to Sam. Mhm. And Dean says like, Sam how do I turn my emotions off? Oh. Okay? And then Sam like replies and he's like okay. So first go to settings. Mhm. Wait. I thought that said emojis. Never mind. Dean yeah is replying. No, no. I'm still willing to try this. Go ahead. I'm at settings. What do I do next? Mhm. I got it. So you know what? I find it a little weird. Yeah. That Dean would ask Sam how to turn his emotions off because I feel between the two yeah. Dean already has his emotions off. Yeah. <laughs> That's the whole point of yeah. the quotes. Yeah, yeah. Okay, got it. But anyway, yeah. So I feel like no, the incorrect quotes is something you feel the character would say. Yeah, I don't think they would. I don't I, if, if the other way I would agree. If Sam messaged Dean saying how do you turn off incorrect quotes? I course? think I mean incorrect quotes. <laughs> how do you turn off emotions? Yeah. I think I would agree with that quote. I think In the first few season be Sam asking Dean mm-hmm. but as you go on especially after season 5 I know what you're talking six, about season 6 I'm not yeah. going to say what, season 6 yeah, right? yeah 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 I think after that it's going to be Dean cuz like Sam got pretty shut off after that shut down especially after that's, the Lucifer thing Yeah that's true but I still feel like even through Dean not that. extremely emotional with um <laughs> Yeah yeah yeah, yeah 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 so but but still yeah maybe maybe but i feel like at least for this where we are right yeah. now i feel like it's something that would yeah, that I agree. it would be the other way uh, i think after you go later in the series maybe it could still work yeah okay right. next one mm-hmm. teen is telling sam mm-hmm. there's only one rule i live by mm-hmm. uh, i live my life by mm-hmm. and that's there are no rules ah okay sam says isn't that a rule though 
and then Dean said, shut up, Sam. Oh my God, this I agree. It, it could totally be them. I feel like, you know, Dean would be the type who would just go on saying some random shit just because he had to yeah, say it. Yeah. And Sam would kind of show him like, dude, you make no sense. Yeah. And he's like, shut up. I make sense. <laughs> I think that has happened in the yeah, show. Yeah, I agree. Um, Dean says, okay. I screwed up. Mm-hmm. Sam replies, given your daily experiences, you're going to need to be a little more specific. Oh, I like that. Has it not been said? It feels like it hasn't, but I right? don't think it's not been said. Not but you know what I don't think Dean would ever come and be like I screwed up Dean would come with excuses of why what yeah, he did was yeah. right and this Sam would yeah, just get this yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel yeah <laughs> uh, Sam I'm checking the symptoms to your illness Dean uh, Dean replies and he says and Sam says it says you could have network connectivity problems <laughs> <laughs> literally a robot yeah <laughs> like oh yeah I got that or um you could also be like, um, like he Sam's page isn't loading. Yeah, he doesn't yeah, have yeah. Wi-Fi, he and he's just like, oh, uh, yeah, that's not connectivity symptoms. problems. <laughs> like I literally. typed everything in, and that's what came up. <laughs> I see that, and that is the incorrect quote of Elder. Okay. Hey, now let's go into music. Yeah. Let me read out all the music that was there in this episode. So the first was... Sorry. The first... Oh, just to remind you. In season one, the song plays in the next episode, not the last episode. Really? Yeah, second last episode. Because it's part one, part two? No. Remember I told you in the first season, it's never... It's only after this that it becomes a finale song. Oh, it's I completely never, forgot about it's that. It's never from season one. Completely forgot about that. Though technically you will not even hear this carry on away with song mm-hmm. next episode because it's only in the original. Ah, not in yeah, the... Yeah. It's only in the TV, TV yeah. DVD. But okay, TV, anyway. DVD. TV DVD. TV DVD. <laughs> so the first song that was played is The House is Rocking. Yeah. By Stevie Ray Wagon. Wagon. Walking. Walking. And Walkin. double trouble. It's in the TV DVD version. TV DVD. <laughs> it's, in, it's, the, it's in the beginning <laughs> in the bar. Beginning in the bar. Yeah. And everybody there was drinking Martinis with Me by Hilly Billy Hellcats. Wasn't it Dirty Martinis or something? No. Oh, I don't know why. That just. Okay, never mind. Hilly Billy Hellcats in the Netflix. Oh. Oh. Netflix version of the same scene. Same scene. And then you had Searching for the Truth by Brian Keith Nutter. It, this song is there in the TV, DVD and the Netflix version. And it's when Sam and Dean are at the diner looking for a job. They were looking for a job? When were they looking for a job? When were they looking for a job? You're right. Tune find. Work on your work. Okay. <laughs> work on your work. On your work. <laughs> okay. Trailer Trash by 88 Crash. That's Ooh. nice. There's also on the TV, DVD and Netflix version. It's an instrumental version plays when the vampires set a trap to capture the young people. Couple? The guy Couple. lies down. Oh my god. That's what I want. I kept thinking I wanted to tell you something because I had a piece of trivia as well. Oh yes. Tell me. So, um, do you remember that guy? He lies down on the ground yeah. to get the couple. Yeah. That's a ref. I don't know if it's a reference or supernatural. Got it from Damon. Damon. Yes. Huh. Yeah. 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 Because like his way of dealing with his emotions. Because he was like sad. I don't know what he was. I haven't watched the series. It was just a scene on TikTok. But basically, he was trying to deal with some sort of emotions of his, and he wanted to kill himself. So he just lied down on the road. Oh, okay. What I read was different. Hmm? I said I read that that was kind. That was his favorite way of hunting people. Hunting for blood was he used to always lie on the road and then watch people hmm. and the people basically that exact same scene was what he used to do in DVD. That was his favorite way. I, I'm pretty sure it's only happened what once that I, I read. Of. And is DVD later than Supernatural? Let's find out. I have a feeling it is. I don't think... Oh, 2009. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. so it is actually... Supernatural is first. Okay. The next song is Strange Faces of Love by Tito and Tarantula. 
It's in the TV DVD version that's at the party in the vampire nest. Right. They did have a party. Walk on Tall. Walk on Tall by Boo Boo Davis. It's in the Netflix version of the exact same party. Yes. Then we had Blood Drops Keep Falling on My Face by Christopher Lennitz when John is talking to Sam while Dean is out. That's a, that's a cool like, reference yeah. to the episode. I yeah. Know that. Fragments of the Past by, is when basically John is also talking to D, uh, talking to Sam. Exact same scene. Yeah. In the other version. Yeah, I guess. Okay. And the <laughs> last one is End Credits and More Guitar Grit. More, I guess. Okay, it's in the TV, DVD and Netflix version. At the very end when John agrees that they're stronger as a family. <laughs> family, family. Okay. What was your pick? <laughs> what was my pick? My pick was my pick was Searching for the Truth by Brian Keith Nutter. Because I feel like this whole show yeah. is based on searching for the truth. Mm, makes sense. Yeah, I feel like it's so it's so much of searching for the truth. Yeah. So yeah, that's mine. What's yours? Uh, mine was the last one. What's it called again? End mm. credits and more guitar credit Good. by Joy J. J. Kriska. By him. So I was gonna choose fragments of the past by CMA, but then I listened to a part of it and it was so depressing. <laughs> I had a reason, guys. I had a reason for fragments of the past. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna tell you that because it's not by pick though. It's really depressing. <laughs> I had a reason for I'm going to tell you. It's a fragment of the past. John's back. Blah, yeah, blah, blah. A fragment of our past. Names but anyways, my pick is end, credit, uh, end credits and more guitar grid just because it isn't depressing. I got you. Yeah. I got you. I have a reason for the other one, but like it's too depressing for my taste. Yeah. You like noise and yeah. chaos. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Okay. That was the music. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. And then, of course, the very important bond analysis Yeah, that we go to. And I have so much to say. So why don't you start? <laughs> I uh, completely forgot the episode. Why do you always do this? Why? Is why? <laughs> I love how you get excited and then I say something and you just completely deflate. Yeah, because the whole point is that I have too much to say, so I want you to finish saying so that I'm okay. not interrupting you every time you're talking. Uh, the thing is that, like, my opinions, like, bones in my head. When I start talking? Yeah, because I'm like, oh yeah, that did happen. Mm. But now, what would a younger sibling think? Yeah. Because okay, you're like fine. telling me your thing. And fine. I'll interrupt you. Fine, then I'll go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so, the main thing of this bond. Yeah. I feel this episode had a lot to do with John being there. Yeah. Because I feel like normally we've seen the boys together. We've seen the boys fighting. We've seen the boys um, go through all everything. Mm. But the point is it is them together. Mm-hmm. Right? So it was either them against each other yeah. or them together. Yeah. Now I feel now that John was in this episode. Yeah. For most of the episode, it became this whole thing of two people against one. Yeah. Right? It was either John and Dean against Sam. Or it was... Dean and Sam against John. Yeah. I feel like the whole dynamic changed because the it was two that. On the trio. Yeah, right? So there was a lot of that change. Now about that change, so I feel um again, totally as the elder sibling, I feel that in the start of the episodes yeah. where we see Dean is no matter what blindly either listening to John, yeah. though now we have way more Background. Um, background information with the yeah. whole Striga episode yeah. of the reason why he follows him blindly. Like yeah. the for the previous time that, you know, John was here, we did not have that episode. Yeah. Hence, there was a little bit of thing that why does he just literally follow? Yeah. But this episode, we come with that knowledge that why the one time he did not follow his dad's... Um, Something could have happened to Sam. Yeah. Exactly, right? So I feel like that kind of is reflected again, kind of reminds you of that. Yeah. In the starting when, you know, he's not questioning his father. His father says, let's go. He's quiet. You know, he just follows. Yeah. I feel like that's a lot that's there in the episode, in the start. Yeah. Then I feel like towards the middle, we see where even Dean realizes that maybe he 
can talk like maybe he is allowed to talk yeah i feel like you know this because he like you know even when he says that uh i don't think i forgot what happened but basically he tells he basically talks above um john and john is like you are right and you're right and he's like i am <laughs> so i feel like he's so not used to this concept of the fact that he could go against john because he's yeah. never done it yeah. right so the moment he's and then he expects john to react very badly to it yeah. but john kind of agrees with him and he's like wait i don't know this yeah this is like you know total like i don't know this feeling yeah. that you're okay with me not being you know agreeing with you and then of course then we later see that he does take sam side and he goes against his father yeah. and what his father thinks is right so i feel like that was a nice um a whole character range for dean yeah. especially because yeah. we saw that ev- uh, whole evolution. evolution and also we see that you know as in the next two episodes because yeah. these three are the major three episodes yeah. of the season we see that as it goes ahead you see that you know dean does kind of bloom get a little bit of a co- little bit of confidence to actually yeah. go against his dad when he doesn't feel like his dad's right i think that's it the re- so that was the evolution i was talking about yeah. what i was coming to is the fact that i feel um i feel like i mean i don't know but i feel i feel so bad when um when dean is like you know i i, so I always feel i always obviously felt like john was a little too harsh on dean like yeah. constantly right like even now he's come back now and he's telling dean that i would have given your car like this yeah, if you were yeah. going to rust it up yeah, or have given that it to you really you know i feel like as well. okay i'm not saying come and sit and say oh my god i missed you so much and that kind of thing but is there a reason that you have to be that mean yeah. like i was honestly the scene where luther picked him up and throws him against his car yeah. i was so happy i'm like your car is banged up for <laughs> sentins right and i'm like there was just so much um resentment or anger towards yeah, him yeah i don't know why i think he's just so used to being the tough parent that he doesn't know how to not be that yeah. but i feel like there was like i get tough parenting but i feel like there was no need for that at that point and yeah. he's not a kid true they're in their late 20s they're grown men they do not need you to be oh uh, you know a general hun- yeah like they don't said. yeah they don't need you to be like exactly they don't need you to you know sit and command over yeah. them anymore like you can have a proper conversation and they'll be even more happier to help you if you at least mm-hmm. talk to them about why you're doing what you're doing so i feel like that and then i also feel like the way hey, like you know there's such sweet snippets in the episode where uh dean is asking his dad whether he wants the gun and he's like nah i'm okay and i'm like you could have just acknowledge the fact he's you know he's literally turning around with a gun to give you and yeah. you're like Ah, uh, have mine, and you open this whole huge briefcase and huge yeah. innovation stuff of yours that has ten thousand drawers yeah. in it. Yeah, but whatever. I feel like he was being a little too harsh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's nice that Sam got his moment with his dad, and they have a nice um, talk heart to heart. And Dean is busy going and buying yeah, blood. Yeah, I do have something to say about that. Yeah, I feel like Sam has gotten too many. heartfelt moments yeah right because he got one with his mom yeah dean got a look yeah sam's got one with his dad yeah dean's got harshness exactly sam ha- sorry dean hasn't gotten that heartfelt moment i know right so i feel like we sort of get that like a little bit of it in the next two episodes what i yeah, remember i mean no after what john does with yeah dean but still yeah but i feel like they talk it out a little more after this episode Yeah. But I remember. I don't remember much. Yeah. Whatever I remember. Yeah. They talk it out, but I I really think that they should have added scene with like Dean and Mary. Mhm. Talking to just saying something cuz I yeah. feel like her just staring like what the hell bro? <laughs> you have a mouth. You just use it and you're just like hmm, I'm just stare at you for like 2 seconds and be like and then go back to Sam exactly. and saying, "Sam, oh, my dear Sam." Whatever. Yeah. Oh and I also do have something to say what you said about that like yeah. Dean um joining Sam and being like oh I can actually step up to him yeah um we keep talking about the tattoo thing right I keep yeah. you while I'm yeah, the same yeah, yeah. and just you saying that just reminded me of it cuz like Sam brought out that like side of him where he's like mm-hmm. hold up 
this like my younger sibling is able to do this he'll yeah. be able to shout at our yeah. father yeah without like actually getting any thing back what if i try something yeah. like that violence he kind of brought out yeah and like a uh, dean push john away from uh sam when yeah. he was getting too close in the yeah. first scene like yeah. when he both of them were arguing yeah so i think that that kind of thing <laughs> was really like they push it out really well i think mm. they push out the like older sibling younger sibling dynamic cuz overall younger siblings are much more like our anger issues are like mm. on another level don't do we know that and like i think they express that well yeah cuz like also i don't know if this comes later this is something i've noticed about you yeah like i don't know if it's applicable to all older siblings yeah this is something i've noticed about both of us when i'm angry i need to shout at someone i need to get it out yeah when you're angry you just go silent like as a statue yeah. and i'm like flipping shout do yeah. something yeah. Like, don't just sit there and like god I, I, i throw stuff when you get quiet <laughs> i throw stuff cuz i'm ex- i want that anger of yours to like boil out yeah Yeah so I, I like even Dean does the same I think he just goes quiet if someone like yeah. pissed him off yeah. while Sam is like shouting at, like actively at his dad yeah. and I'm just like Dean just me throw something at your yeah. dad you know and especially because we've watched the show yeah. the things Dean feels the way he thinks of himself yeah later on in the show is just so heartbreaking yeah. i hate those moments because i feel like there's so much in for so many reasons he's overlooked yeah by both the parents for that matter yeah, right yeah one mary is mary is like oh my god you were 6 months old when i died and all of that for sam yeah. that her whole attention goes that she never saw sam yeah. grow up but she you know saw dean till he was 6 yeah for of a john it's all like oh my god you you went away you went to college yeah. i you were in there when i needed you my your brother and i needed you but dean stayed Yeah. I don't see you turning and telling Dean that I'm so glad you stayed. I think they I only see you sitting and telling Sam you were in there, you were in there. Yeah. I know? think they realized once Dean went away for a few days. I think John would actually realize how much he leaned on Dean. Yeah. If Dean was just like, "Oh, I'm taking a vacation." So yeah. you're there fucking hunting by yourself. Exactly. I mean, your aunt's your voicemail says call my son Dean. Yeah, you've leaned on him so much. What exactly. if he said No, I'm not hunting. Get the hell away from me. Yeah, exactly. Right. I feel like oh, I feel like Dean deserves a little hug. He would hate the hug, but he deserves. It. Yeah, just I I I I vibe with Dean on many levels. Yeah, it's it's a little. Ah, uh, but Dean's a kind of person like kind of similar to me. What I'd rather initi- initiate a hug rather than get a hug. Yeah, obviously. Yeah. Yeah, I'd rather I'm hug obviously. someone. Yeah, and Dean's never initiating a hug anyway. Yeah. So he's never doing that anyway. Yeah, I only do that on like the only time I've actually like hugged a person outside of you is like it was that person's birthday and everyone was bullying them and I bullied them all. <laughs> so I was like, okay, but you know how I hugged them? It wasn't like a proper hug. I did the side hug. Yeah. Side hug with the shoulder pat. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I was like, and they were like, oh my god, you hugged me, and I'm like, shut up. <laughs> I did not. Did not ruin this. I didn't hug you at all. Yeah. And then I have friends who just come up to me and hug me and I'm just like curled up into my sofa <laughs> like let me go. Yes. So, I think yeah, so that's the very disappointing John and Jester. We like, hate him. I Like it was kind of obvious in the previous time he was here. I think personally, I will kill John and Jester myself. For me, I think you have seen how much I can hit someone and harm someone. I have seen. You have. I have felt. You mean? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Anyways, because like I think the rage of a younger sibling mm-hmm. is unmatchable. Uh-huh. Even if you're like one of the most experiences, experienced, experienced people in the world, you like feel if you get in the way of like the rage of a younger sibling. <laughs> you're that no i agree i feel like like you know do you see these sony reels or on or, or tiktoks yeah but you see this 
uh, these parents taking videos of saying my elder one who's yeah. just quietly sitting yeah. and doing something yeah. and then they zoom the younger one who's like doing some random nonsense yeah. is either hitting themselves somewhere or doing something i feel that is totally that is exactly like every yeah. sibling right you have the elder one who's more sorted who's more calm Civilized. who's more civilized yeah like that yes. compared to the younger one who's literally just doing anything and we have a lot of things in our head we don't know what they are we don't know where they've come from you think we don't have things in our head no we're just more expressive with it not talking once we'll do anything yeah maybe i don't know you guys just sit I quietly feel like, i feel like because you guys i think you know i think what i think it's a fact that when you have someone younger than you mm-hmm. you automatically have to become matured excuse me no when you have someone younger like i was as no 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 i no. was like every 10 year old yes. till you were born no i mean and then suddenly i was not 10 anymore yeah. right because i had this small little thing i had to take thing, care of hands <laughs> no i'm not i'm not talking about that i feel like um recently especially at that role is switched okay we cuz like okay we need to explain this a bit no um, we don't yeah we do because you didn't get the childhood like you didn't get the child child like the child mindset because i was born uh huh <laughs> you kind of missed out on that and now i feel like she's living it out cuz i feel like the troubled mother <laughs> cuz we have if you don't know we have dog and they start always playing <laughs> that's a very if uh, you can call it that very very calm way of yeah <laughs> so so guess what right i like trouble our dog by trouble i mean like poke her a couple of times and then she'll just be like oh i hate you and walk away from me <laughs> this one right she go chasing her around the house she'll do whatever she can like they'll bark and growl at each other and then a dog is like oh no let me come to you i'm sorry what did i do i didn't do anything you're the one who troubled me but i will give you love i get scratches for doing nothing i'll pick her up because you know no 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 i'll pick her up because like i need to take her in because she usually sleeps in my room these days like i'll take her up and she scratches me <laughs> i have scars from this in scar. her defense okay when she came to th- came home i was scared of her exactly so you guys from the from day 1 have had a very total sibling rivalry kind of relationship where you were always eating each other's head or either troubling each other or have been constantly at each other's nerves irritating each yeah. other while she and i from day 1 have had she, she she's always been literally stuck to my hip from day 1 yeah right So it's kind of obvious that no matter what happens, she will be stuck to my hip at all times. Mm. And even though you guys have now become much better, thankfully, than what you guys were. Yeah, I used to go sit in were, a cage to annoy her. You guys were two crazy people together. But anyway, now that even though you have evolved from that, yeah. and obviously she also has evolved from that, but I think that somewhere it, she goes back to that thing and hence you yeah. guys are like that. But the best part, you know, after the scratching, after that, these two will be playing and if you... obviously you can't see it but that was an air quotes <laughs> um and then if you know a dog gets a bit mad and she's like oh, oh i'm going to bite her or something she comes running to me and then she'll be like oh go look at her i'll have to be like bro stop <laughs> i'll have to hold this one on one side and bite this one i mean a dog on the other side after hold her <laughs> i have to make sure these two don't get on each other's nerves again because after that and I, at the end of it i'll be like both of them will look at me and be like what is playing why are you stopping us bro both of you are like on two sides of me being like oh i'm going to kill you and obviously i have to hold both of you oh that reminds me yeah uh, of another aspect of the whole bond as bond in, yeah. the, in the show Ooh, with that dog yeah no with the whole fact that now dean had to kind of become like the parent yeah, yeah. when the own parent and the kid are yeah. fighting <laughs> do you I just feel, call me the parent thank you i did not mean you both i meant literally i know john and but no what it reminded you of no i'll tell you what it <laughs> <laughs> john and sam fighting which i feel like which is so true even with us at home yeah 
that when there is a fight going on between you and our parents, yeah, I suddenly have to become the voice of reason. I am the one who kind of has to stop both sides and tell our mom to calm down, tell you to calm down, tell you to say sorry if you've crossed yeah. the line, I... tell our parents to be like, okay, just give her time, calm down, I and mean, it's fine. Don't say those things to her and things like that. I'm like, great. And at the end. Both of you are, all of you are nice to each other. I mean, you guys are not mean to me, that's true. I But, am. Yeah, oh no, my you're God. Never, you're never mean. Okay, I've become better, okay? I yeah. I used to be so, like, you'd, you'd touch me and I'd get pissed off and I'd say the worst things to you that could break a person's, like, entire being into yeah. pieces. Yeah. And I think that's reduced. A hundred percent. Yeah. And With a lot of insults and, and screams from me, that has reduced. Yeah. With a lot of parenting, I'd like to put yeah, it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> like, I could, like, break an entire person's soul <laughs> with, like, one remark. Yeah, because you lash out when you lash out. Yeah, and what annoys me is that everyone's like, oh, but you need to apologize. They're your parents. Ah, uh, no, I do not. If they've started it, why should I have to be the one who's ending it? <laughs> Okay, before this goes in a whole different direction. Yeah, like, they should just shut up and mind their own business. Like, why do you have to lash out at me when you're mad at each other? <laughs> Thanks a lot. I don't want to be involved in your issues. Keep it to yourself. Oh. Go lash out at your office, people. Cool. Bye. Okay, moving on. Okay, so that was the episode. <laughs> and just to wrap up the episode, what did you think of the episode? I think John Winchester should die. Except John Winchester. Sorry. J asterisk asterisk N W. Except John Winchester. Fine, fine. Okay, get up. Yeah, go on. Oh, I I okay. Um, so John no, kill John Winchester. <laughs> the uh, episode. The episode. <laughs> Sorry, I disassociate. The episode. Oh, the episode. So, I think it was a really good, like, episode. Because you kind of see how, like, you kind of see Sam and Dean's character itself. Mm-hmm. How Sam kind of goes back to his self before he left. Yeah. Because, like, I assume John and him was fighting a lot before yeah. he left for Even college. Even Dean says that. Though. Yeah, he does say that. The same old arguments. <laughs> <laughs> and I feel like it was always, like, Dean getting stuck in the middle. Because at the same time, he doesn't want Sam to leave, but he also wants Sam to experience the things Dean didn't have. Like he said in the previous episode, I wish you had a, a, the innocent child. Yeah. So, I feel like John is always in the wrong. And even if he <laughs> does something... That could seem redeeming. It's not. It's like he's like the Snape <laughs> of Supernatural. As much as everyone's like, oh my god, he redeemed himself. No, he did not. He was an asshole. Okay. Um. Okay. Basically, I thought I um what I thought of the episode is yeah. I liked the introduction of John mm-hmm. just to get a little change yeah. and a little fresh perspective into the family yeah because i mean technically these three are the only living family for now for now yeah right so um so it's nice to see a little just a little fresher newer perspective mm-hmm. to the family and it's also nice to see a third person into a two person bond yeah so it's nice to see how everything changes and how things evolve between yeah. them yeah which is nice and the fact that the father finally is like okay okay yeah, maybe we can do it together which is good i guess yeah. i mean john majesta is growing in life <laughs> but, but his height never grew <laughs> since he was a 12 year old boy <laughs> my god anyway bro he shot and that's okay yeah it is okay but yeah. not for john majesta oh my god like the actor actor is fine Jeffrey Dean Morgan. Yeah, he's perfectly fine. Mm-hmm. It's John when just I have a problem. Yeah, you have the character. You have an issue with the character. Yeah, I, which is fair. Which is okay. I'm perfectly fine unless like, the actor has done something which I don't think no. Jeffrey Jeffrey has at all. Because all of most of the supernatural cast that I know of is like perfect. Yeah, yeah they fit. And they're all still in touch, which is sweet. Yeah, that's really nice. Okay, anyways. You were yeah, saying. so I feel like that was a nice ad. And also, like someone, um, I think Cups and Culture had pointed out that I like that the whole 
show no not cups and culture someone else had pointed out but anyway claudio yeah i think so the fact that they didn't just play into the same boring stuff you see about vampires ah, yes. you know the whole thing oh my god sunlight will burn so all you have to do is just get sunlight so things like that yeah. i feel like it was nice that they didn't play into those yeah. and they did kind of you know have their own take on it true it was nice that they had this whole new weapon created just to yeah. you know uh, kill the vampires it was nice it true. was a nice I'm sorry. I like the continuity of using the cold through all the 15 seasons. I think yeah. that's only one of the few things that's remained yeah. the same except for the brothers. Yeah. And of course they get better at dealing with Yeah. the monsters of the week. But yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Exactly. Yeah. So that was a that was a good episode. Yeah, it was. It is getting better and better and I cannot wait for the next two episodes. There's just so much that happens. I can't wait for season two because then I can be like, overall, this is the 24th episode. Yeah. Um, and I also loved how uh, when you said, oh, these three are the only living members, you grab my thumb and were like, I don't know if you did that, like, consciously. Oh, I did not. No. Okay, so, so subconsciously, you just grab my thumb and I was like, oh! I'm the only living member of your family. Excuse me. <laughs> I'm sorry. I you are not. Yeah, I'm not. Okay. But I felt special. Oh, my baby. So, my, I'm very delusional and I disass- like associate, so I don't even like know what's going on half the of the time. The fact that for one hour, 15 minutes... Okay, let's not say 15 minutes because you did disassociate a lot. But okay, the fact that for about 1 hour 10 minutes we had your attention, <laughs> which is, I think it's a good thing. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for your attention. Yeah, you're welcome. No worry about it. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in this week. 